Good morning, guys, and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. This morning, we're gonna do something special in honor of the introduction of BMW's 2021 R18 Cruiser. That's right, the Bavarian brand has entered the hotly contested American Cruiser segment with this beauty. So let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, guys, here it is, BMW's 2021 R18 Cruiser. This is an all-new cruiser from the Motorrad company out of Germany. They've teased this motorcycle and this big boxer twin for quite some time now. And here it is in the flesh for the 2021 model year here in the United States. Look at this motorcycle. This machine was styled after BMW's 1936 R5. Google 1936 BMW R5. That motorcycle is beautiful. You can see the tank in that original motorcycle. The lines, the double loop frame, loop, loop, open exposed drive shaft. Look at that thing. Look how pretty that piece is. And of course, BMW's boxer engine, 110 cubic inches, 1802. CC BMW's been building these boxer engines for 97 years. 97 years of horizontally opposed twin cylinder magnificence. And this motorcycle is just unbelievably looking. I love how everything is tucked away. There's not a lot of exposed wires or other mechanical eyesores. It's pure aesthetic gorgeousness. This is a very, very, very good looking, high quality motorcycle. But enough talking about it. Let's swing a leg over this thing and see what it's like to ride. Okay guys, here we go. An electronic key fob. This electronic key fob is styled just like the original fuel tank on the 36 R5 BMW Motorrad motorcycle. Key fobs, I'm not a big fan of them. I wish it had a mechanical key. You still need to use this mechanical beat bit to lock the steering, but I like mechanical keys where you turn an insert. When I was unloading this motorcycle from the truck last night, I was off the ramp a little bit and I wanted to start the motorcycle to ride up the ramp to readjust things and I couldn't because the key fob was in my house and somehow I was able to do it but I always want a mechanical key, put it in the bike, turn it, start it, away you go. Well, that's the starting procedure guys. Press the starter button and you feel the engine twist to the left real quick as you start it. Very neat kind of experience and feature. You can tell BMW really spent some time on the details. That's where BMW really separates itself from the competition is in the details. These motorcycles are always extremely well engineered at, at a very finite and detail oriented level. Right away sitting on this motorcycle, well, it's a cruiser. The seat's super low, it's got a big dish. The handlebar is nice and wide, has a ton of rearward sweep. As composed to, or as opposed to other cruisers, this R18 has mid controls. So where other cruisers have foot forward controls, this one has mids. And a little bit of the reason why it has mids is because it couldn't have forward controls because the Boxer engines 1802ccs are in the way. I'm a mid control cruiser kind of guy anyways, so for me it's not a big deal. Take the little shortcut here guys. BMW says that they position this motorcycle to go against Harley Davidson's soft tail slim. This is what BMW envisions as a bobber style motorcycle. Bobber style motorcycles traditionally have no 
rear suspension they're fixed this thing does have rear suspension just over three inches of travel back there and even though Harley Davidson says that or I'm sorry BMW says that this is goes against the soft tail slim to me it almost feels like a it really goes against the low rider slash low rider s I say slash in between because this thing has double disc front brakes it doesn't have the sporty look of the low rider s it's more low rider style but that's where i say this motorcycle really positions itself in and it's designed for the type of rider who wants that cruiser v-twin esque experience but with a slightly different taste with the fit and finish and build quality and attention to detail that only Motorrad can offer. Ergonomically, BMW motorcycles are always designed to be ridden by larger size riders where other motorcycle manufacturers have ebb and flows between fitting bigger riders and smaller riders and back and forth. For the last or ever since I can remember, BMW has been making these motorcycles for bigger humans, which I like. I'm six foot tall, and I fit on this motorcycle very comfortably. The handlebar is extremely wide. The reach to the handlebar is almost a little bit much, but I like it. Let's go up front here, guys. As always, BMW has a variety of seat height options. They have a lower seat height option, a taller seat, seat, a comfort seat. BMW is always really good about offering different seat applications so riders can customize and tweak the way the motorcycle feels beneath them. Clutch controls the six speed gearbox, puts power down to the back wheel via a right hand side mechanical shaft. And we talked about how that mechanical shaft is open just like the original 36 R5. It is just aesthetically speaking, it's beautiful. It just looks so awesome. And the Shaft drive helps mitigate maintenance. There's no chain to stretch or clean or replace. There's no belt tension to adjust, no belt to snap. It's a solid mechanical setup. In fact, the only thing you have to do maintenance-wise maintenance -wise in the transmission department is change the oil in the gear mechanism. Every 24,000 miles, you need to change the gear fluid in there, is what the maintenance schedule calls for. While we're speaking of maintenance, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but this 1802cc horizontally opposed twin requires oil changes every 6,000 miles. You change the oil, put a new air filter in, and BMW Motorrad suggests that you check the valve clearances. This engine employs four valve cylinder heads. Four valve cylinder heads controlled by an overhead cam on each cylinder. Now BMW has been building these Boxer Twins for 97 years. Isn't that crazy? 97 years of pedigree in this powertrain and these motorcycles much like other manufacturers have signature characteristics of their powertrains this boxer engine has a character all its own it's got a really pleasing throaty sound it's got good vibration the vibration is tuned where it's not just vibration to have vibration it's vibration to to enhance the experience of the motorcycle you definitely feel 
some buzz through the handlebar and through the foot pegs but again I wouldn't say it's excessive or off-putting it just makes it for a more fun ride this engine is air and oil cooled so we have big fins on each cylinder that pull heat away from the cylinders there's also an oil cooler located behind the front wheel speaking of oil this engine holds just over a gallon of engine oil so there's a lot of cooling capacity in this 110 cubic inch engine power this thing's got some some might to it it's not quite as fast as we initially thought it would be just based on what BMW was noting in the boxer twin release press materials that it it unveiled many 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 months ago but on the dyno this thing makes right around 102 foot-pound of torque that's Goldwing ter territory that's the kind of torque a six-cylinder Honda Goldwing puts out and it's only a few foot-pound below Honda's I'm sorry BMW's sensational six-cylinder K1600 GTL motorcycle which is a torque monster so a lot of torque on tap just over 80, 80 horsepower available at the business end of the Bridgestone Battle Cruise H50 tire this motorcycle comes with Bridgestones or Michelin's this particular one is fitted with Bridgestones 19 inch front 16 inch rear wheel that's another reason why this motorcycle really isn't a soft tail slim the soft tail slims have really small diameter wheels I think they're 16s on each side and this 19 inch front really helps give a more substantial presence visually and when it's just rolling down the road the bigger the wheel size the more rolling momentum the bike has and it just makes for like a bigger bike feel in typical motor ad fashion we've got heated grips we've got all kinds of creature comforts this motorcycle has three combined engine throttle and traction control modes we have rock which is the most aggressive throttle response with the least amount of ASC that's BMW nomenclature for traction control we have rain which mellows the throttle response heightens the ASC level for improved grip and a more mellow riding experience obviously in the rain but you could also use it if you were a new rider or you were just getting acclimated to this motorcycle you put it in rain mode and it softens the throttle response makes it easier to ride and then we have roll which is almost like a touring calibration smooth smoothens the throttle response a normal amount of ASC of course you can disable the traction control manually with this button here on the left hand side switch gear that allows you to do burnouts because this thing couldn't be a real cruiser if it couldn't do burnouts six speed gearbox has a really nice audible thud when you're changing gears the throw in the shift lever isn't too much and I like how easy it is to find neutral at a stop very slick shifting transmission the powertrain also includes a mechanical slipper action clutch so if you down look, downshift too, too quickly or you downshift the motorcycle at an engine speed that's too high for the vehicle speed traveled 
it won't lock up, the rear wheel won't lock up, and it mitigates instability. Neat feature. Talked about suspension. Nearly five inches of travel up front. Just over three out back. And this thing rides like a cruiser. And when I say it rides like a cruiser, it generally has adequate ride quality, but you're gonna feel some bumps, especially through the rear suspension. Suspension. You're gonna feel some bumps, you hit some big holes, and you feel them through your spine. The one thing I note about the suspension, though, is the action. The action seems to be a little bit more smooth when it hits the bump, compresses, and then rebounds. That movement between down and return seems to be a little bit smoother. So the action is smoother than other cruiser motorcycles I've ridden recently, but this thing is going to beat you up. If you're looking for a comfortable cruiser that's really gonna pound out miles and deliver you with a magic carpet-like ride, this R18 is not the bike. But to be fair, any bike in this category wouldn't be the bike. Ooh, just listen to that engine. God, I love the sound of these things. The, the exhaust, the sound and tone of the exhaust is always a very, very important feature of a V-twin motorcycle. And BMW is just, the sound on this motorcycle almost, it, it sounds like a boxer twin, but it almost kind of sounds like an American V-twin in a way. Just a really nice and unique exhaust tone that we really haven't heard from Motorrad. So kudos to them to giving us riders a little bit different experience. All right, guys, we're on the boring freeway. We're gonna sign off here and talk about things when we're off the boring freeway. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys, we're off the freeway. For freeway use, this motorcycle is not as bad as I thought it would be. The rear view mirrors have a decent view behind you. They get a little cloudy from the engine vibration, but not terrible. And this engine has more than enough power to keep up with the flow of traffic, even speedy traffic in Southern California. Engine heat's not excessive, and for short stints on the freeway, this motorcycle can certainly do it. But if you're gonna be commuting even 30 minutes on the freeway, I think that'd be a little bit much. Just short freeway jaunts is what this motorcycle is capable of anything longer, and it's a little bit too much. Instrumentation. This bike has a round face analog style instrument pod. There's also a back negative lit, which means black background, white numbers, LCD display below it. All kinds of functions in there. You got a clock, tachometer, which is kind of neat. Trip functions, average fuel mileage, instant fuel mileage. You can also see when, you can also use it to know when you're in reverse when you are using the electronic reverse feature, which we'll show you guys how to use in a bit. This R18 is fitted with electronic reverse, which is available as an option. It also has BMW's Headlights Pro, which is cornering headlight function so the headlights actually illuminate toward towards the right or towards the left based on lean angle we rode this motorcycle after dark and the headlights do a decent job for a cruiser you know realistically i should probably be riding this motorcycle slower at night i'm just used to riding them kind of quick and the headlight could be brighter and it could throw 
a further swath of light compared to bikes like BMW's S1000XR, which we've ridden lately. Though to be fair, you can actually adjust the headlight with tools. You can increase the pitch up or down. So headlights aren't totally awesome, but they're not totally terrible either. And the cornering function works well, but I wish it even had more, more illumination when you're when you're at lean you know after riding honda's insanely awesome 2020 africa twin adventure sport es that is now the gold standard for cornering headlights and if it's not that it's just not good enough with a full tank of fuel this bike weighs a hundred I'm sorry, 790 pounds with a full load of fuel. And this bike is heavy. It is so heavy, it's insane. Just trying to load it last night into the truck by myself was, oh my God, it's one of the most difficult things I've ever done before. Yet, when you're riding this bike, it is so agile. I don't know how BMW does it. 790 pounds on the kickstand and it feels that heavy going slow but when you're moving it here with the wheels in motion it is so agile unbelievable finally guys we're in the twisties because this wouldn't be a real review if we didn't ride the bike through the twisties and again this 790 pound r18 it is insane how agile a bike of this size is you gotta remember, not only is it heavy, this thing's got a huge wheelbase. It's just so crazy long. I think it's about 10 inches longer than BMW's own R9T, which has some influence into this bike, says BMW. You can feel it too when you're riding. Cornering clearance is limited. Obviously a bike that's this long and low is not going to have a tremendous amount of cornering clearance But it's still enough to get the blood moving And this engine you're riding it in a more sporty manner my god this thing has grunt It pulls just as well at high rpm as it does at low rpm which is awesome. And just listen to that sound. God, this thing sounds so good. Brakes. Triple disc hydraulic brakes on this motorcycle. Obviously the, the look of the hardware is just exquisite. Both levers have lever position adjustment oddly enough it's opposite compared to the japanese bike so the lower the number the closer the lever is to the handlebar the higher number the more farther away which is exactly opposite of the japanese bikes and the italian bikes but oh well it's also worth noting that damping is fixed there's no compression or rebound damping adjustment you can adjust the ride height of the motorcycle via a spring preload knob that is beneath the seat area so you can adjust the ride height of the rear suspension based on preference or if you have a passenger or not this r18 is outfitted with bmw's optional passenger kit it's a 250 dollars option that allows you to bring a friend along for the ride. And the passenger seat is decently sized and it's thick. You didn't get a chance to haul a passenger this time around, but we envisioned that it'd be a pretty comfortable mount, mount for your friend or significant other.
braking obviously brakes on a bike that weigh that weigh 790 pounds are very important and the triple disc hydraulic brakes on this bike are awesome four piston calipers three of them two on the front one on the back and that really does a great job of slowing down this motorcycle abs is standard you cannot manually disable it the r18 also includes a bmw's abs integration system which is basically almost a form of combined braking now when you actuate the front brake lever or the rear brake pedal it operates the brake independently of the other side so if you use the front brake lever only the front brakes are actuated conversely if you use the rear brake pedal only the back brake brake is actuated still the computer has i'm sorry the motorcycle has logic built into it so if the motorcycle senses that the balance of the chassis is off via excessive rear brake application or front brake application it automatically reroutes brake pressure to the other brake to help balance the chassis during brake application really slick slick technology and i don't even feel it actuating to be fair though i always try to be pretty smooth on my brake application and I really like using the front and rear brakes when I'm riding on the street. On the racetrack, that's another matter. But the brakes on this motorcycle are excellent. Stainless steel lines help mitigate fade. And I like that the rear brake has some serious stomping power, just like a traditional V-twin cruiser should. Good job, BMW. All right, guys, after riding this bike a little bit over 100 miles, the three global riding modes, rock, roll, and rain. Now, the most noticeable difference between these three modes is in terms of throttle response. So in the rock setting, the throttle seems the most accurate. That is when you twist it, it feeds fuel into the engine and the engine accelerates. The harder you twist, the more throttle you get, the faster the bike goes. In roll, the initial throttle response is neutralized a little bit. So you have to twist the throttle a little bit deeper for it to really go. And I could see how that could be a good setting if you were maybe newer to riding or you were a little bit intimidated by the outright power of this motorcycle. But to be fair, even in the most aggressive setting, it's not very aggressive, at least compared to a modern sporty-ish bike. Rain mode, that neutralizes the throttle response even more when you crack the throttle. So you really have to twist that thing to get it to go. And it doesn't so much affect outright engine power. It's all about throttle response and how the engine comes online and starts serving torque and horsepower. Obviously, rock is my preferred setting. And in any of the three modes, just due to the the limited cornering, cornering lean angle, you can't really get the traction control to come on. The bike just can't lean over enough to, to have traction control intervene, even in the sportiest setting. Yet, it's still nice that traction control or BMW's ASC is there. Look guys, how fitting we're in this Wolfpack style American V-Twin riding brigade. And I think this R18 is a very nice alternative to a traditional American V-Twin. I really like how BMW, they integrated classic traditional V-Twin-like riding experience with 
a motor rad twist from the sound and the character of the engine. It's not just, it just, it sounds like a boxer twin with a V twin S type exhaust tone to the extreme agility and attention to detail. BMW did a really nice job and this R18 is a great alternative for a V-twin rider who's looking for the experience that a traditional cruiser offers with a pedigree and a fit and finish and quality and attention to detail that only BMW can offer. And I'm not a cruiser guy, but if I was looking for a traditional cruiser, I wouldn't hesitate to to consider this R18. It's a really nice and well executed motorcycle in this segment. All right guys, we're gonna use reverse. This BMW R18 has optional reverse. We put it here, R, and away we go with reverse. Look, we're backing up guys. How awesome is this? This makes it easy. And then we back right up tight style well guys there it is bmw's 2021 r18 cruiser we had a fun day railing around town on this bike i gotta hand it to the motorrad crew they've really they've brought cvo levels of craftsmanship in engineering and polish to a seventeen thousand five hundred dollar cruiser it really is astounding what they've done with this bike. I love the engine, has tons of torque, has plenty of power at high RPM too. It's playful, it sounds cool, has a very unique exhaust note and character. Handling, geez, this bike handles really good for a 790 pound cruiser. I can't believe how agile it is with wheels turning. Ergonomics are good. It fit me very well. Of course, this is a cruiser style motorcycle with limited suspension travel at the rear. It's not going to be the most comfortable bike for logging miles. But for a round town stunner, you would do very well with this R18. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A and see what is up right to the top guys here we go all right fuel range and comfort we averaged around 35 miles per gallon we rode this motorcycle pretty fast if you go slower it'll get better mpgs 4.2 gallon tank it does not have a fuel gauge but it has a low fuel warning light so you know when to get gas it's decently comfort comfortable we've talked about it a lot you know it's a cruiser bike so it's not going to be that comfortable for long hauls but for around town it's okay and the suspension action is very very good the actual action of the suspension it's smooth on the compression smooth on the rebound doesn't pogo very good r18 or low rider s they're kind of different i'm a big fan of this motor rad bike this is a bike that I would consider owning. I really like this thing a lot. How are the low speed manners? Is this bike maneuverable enough to be considered as an everyday bike? This bike is very maneuverable in motion. We wielding it around the parking lot at low speeds, low speeds or manhandling it, it's very heavy. This thing is crazy heavy. But get some move, get some momentum behind you and actually it's pretty maneuverable. The handlebar is a little bit wide, so you have to be a little bit careful when you're going through traffic, but not bad at all. Definitely pretty maneuverable for this side size of bike. This or an HD soft tail slim. Well, that's a great question because the HD Softail Slim is what BMW was targeting when it built this motorcycle. Softail Slim's a great bike, but I don't really like bikes that have 16 inch wheels. It's just too small. So I would naturally gravitate towards this because this feels like a real big bike and I like real big bikes. So for me, it would be a no brainer. Can this motor compete? How does it feel with competitors from HD and Indian? This 
1802 cc boxer twin is just a really unique take on the cruiser segment it has bmw's signature boxer feel with a twist you know the exhaust note feels very american v-twin ish and it has a very nice character there's power everywhere the engine's playful i wouldn't say it's better than a harley davidson it's just different it's just different it feels different sounds different but the fit and finish and precise engineering and look how clean that engine is i really like the aesthetic i personally like the aesthetic of this more than an american v-twin personally uh, as far as indian there's no comparison these engines are a thousand times better than anything indian polaris can make it's not even fair let's go one more question how does the boxer motor compare to the milwaukee 8 114 again milwaukee 8 114 excellent motor tons of torque great sound playful i wouldn't say this engine's any better or worse it's just different i do like this engine and i do like the milwaukee 8 in harley davidson's these days all right guys enough q a would i spend my $22,265 on this up-spec R18 with the white print stripe that's done by hand, by the way. The chrome treatment, the headlights pro option, the reverse, all the features almost. Would I spend $22,265 on this motorcycle? I might. You know, I'm not traditionally a cruiser guy, but after riding this R18, and just seeing how fun and how nostalgic riding can be yet still have very modern riding dynamics and just look at this bike this bike's a head turner everywhere i went people were like what the heck is that so if i was considering a cruiser i would absolutely consider this motorcycle and i would totally buy it but again i'm not really a cruiser guy so twenty-two thousand dollars for a bike that it's kind of a one-trick pony. It's a lot of money for me. All right, guys, there you have it. That's a review of BMW's 2021 R18 Cruiser. Surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my written content goes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think it was stupid, give it a thumbs down. Leave us a comment. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.